In this lecture, we focus on two things. First, expressing derivative as a function, and then we discuss differentiability of a function. So let's start with describing or expressing a function as, or a derivative as a function. So if the derivative of the function is given by f prime of x equals limit of the function at x plus h minus f of x over h as h approaches 0. And as we described before, if we have a curve or function that's graphed here, and we want to find the slope of the tangent line at the point, for example, x, this is the slope of the tangent line. We want to find the, this is the tangent line, and we want to find the slope of the tangent line. So we can use another point that's very close to x. So let's add some small quantity and call it h. So this distance is very small. It approaches 0, as you can see here h goes to 0. So when h goes to 0, this new point x plus h approaches the original point x. And what happens here, instead of dealing with this point here, and then finding the secant line, and that that's just an approximation of the tangent line. So let me write here secant line, and here the tangent line. So this is just an approximation, but sometimes it's not a good approximation, as we can see here. Here, it's the slope is negative, but the tangent slope of the tangent line is positive because it's increasing. So as h gets smaller and smaller, that means this point approaches the original point x. So this point may be here. So we graph it this way, so it becomes a good approximation of the tangent line. Okay, so the derivative, as we described last time, is given by this formula. And meaning that the derivative here is a function of x. So let's apply this formula. This formula is called definition of the first derivative definition of the derivative or the first derivative so we want to use this definition of the derivative to find the derivative of the function f of x equals 2x minus 1 so we want to find f prime of x using the above definition so we have f prime of x equals limit of f of x plus h, we need to find f of x plus h minus f of x and then divide by h and h goes to 0. So what should I write here? This is f of x plus h. Let's find it here. f of x plus h means that we need to plug x plus h into the function f. So we plug it here. So this gives 2 times x plus h minus 1 when we plug it here. And then we simplify. We distribute 2. We get 2x plus 2 times h, 2h minus 1. So we put this expression here, 2x plus 2h minus 1. Let me erase this part. Now we need to plug f of x here. So what is f of x? It's the original function. It's 2x minus 1, but I put parentheses because we have negative signs so that we don't miss any uh, sign. Now this is 2x plus 2h minus 1. Now we insert the negative sign here. It becomes negative 2x plus 1 because negative negative is positive all over h. And then we simplify. We have 2x minus 2x is 0. Negative 1, positive 1 is 0. This gives limit of 2h over h. h goes to 0. And then we can simplify. We can cancel h with h. And that gives 2. 
So f of prime, the derivative of this function is 2. It's constant. But it can be a, ver a variable or a function that includes uh, some um, variable. Let's see another example. Here the function is the square root x. We want to find the derivative using the definition. So f of prime of x equals limit of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. h goes to 0 or approaches 0. Now we want to find this. What is f of x plus h? We just plug this expression here. So we get square root x plus h. So we put this here. This becomes limit as h approaches 0 of square root x plus h minus. What is f of x? f of x is the original function square root x all over the denominator, which is h. Now, in order to find the limit, we know that the first step is to plug the value of the limit. So let's plug 0 here. If we plug 0, we get square root x plus h. h is 0, so this is square root x minus square root x over the denominator is 0. So square root x minus square root x is 0. 0 over 0, this is undeterminant. Undeterminant form. So this means if we get 0 over 0, that means the solution is not uh, ended here. So we need to use some algebra or algebraic manipulations, uh, manipulations to simplify uh, the problem and solve it. So when we see square root here, we can multiply by the conjugate. How to multiply by the conjugate? We put the limit this limit here. And then what is the conjugate of the numerator? The expression that in, includes square root. So the conjugate is the same expression, but with opposite sign. The negative becomes positive. We multiply by that and divide by same expression. If we have square root x minus 1, what is the conjugate of this? The conjugate is square root x plus 1. If we have 1, 2, plus square root x, then the conjugate is 2 minus square root x. So all what we do, we put same terms, but we change the sign between them. We change the sign as we see here. So that's the conjugate. Now what is the importance of the conjugate? When we multiply an expression by its conjugate, we get square of the first minus square of the second. What does that mean? That means we get some expression. We just remove the square root. We get x plus h because square of this, square of x plus h, we just remove the square root with the square here. And we get x plus h. Minus, we have square. When we square it, we get x because we cancel 2 with the square root. And we divide by h, this h, but we still have some expression here. Square root x plus h plus square root x. And then we simplify. x minus x is 0, so we get limit h over h times square root x plus h plus square root x. h, h goes to 0, and then we cancel the h's from numerator and denominator, so this becomes 1, this becomes 1. So we get limit 1 over square root x plus h plus square root x as h goes to 0. And then the last step, after simplifying the expression here, we just plug h equals 0 here, and we get 1 over square root x plus 0 plus square root x, and that's 1 over square root x plus square root x, but that's nothing but 1 over square root 2 square root x. And that's it. That's the final answer. So the derivative of the function f of x equals square root x is another function of x. It's 1 over 2 square root x. Now, a final example on the definition, the function 1 over x. So the derivative is limit of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, h goes to 0, and then we plug 
x plus h here, so we get 1 over x plus h minus f of x is the same original expression, we divide by h then, and then since we have a fraction in the numerator, we need to get a common denominator. How to get common denominator? It's simple. We cross multiply these. 1 times x is x, then the sign here is minus, then 1 times x plus h, x plus h. We put it into in parentheses so that we don't confuse with the negative sign. Over the product of the denominators, x times x plus h. And then what about this denominator? We multiply by reciprocal of this denominator. Let me explain this more. If you have a over b, plus or minus c over d, how to, to get common denominator? There's a simple method that says you multiply a by d and c by b and then you divide by the product of the denominators. So a times d and the sign here is negative, c times b all divided by bd and that's it. That's what I applied here. So I multiplied a1 by x minus 1 times x plus h and then divided by uh, x times x plus h. Okay, now we simplify more. So we insert the negative sign here. We get limit x minus x minus h because this negative is for both x and h over x times x plus h. h goes to 0. And then x minus x is 0. And we need to multiply actually by 1 over h here. Okay, so this is limit as h goes to 0 of what? Negative h over h times x times x plus h. And then we cancel h, we get limit negative 1 over x times x plus h. h goes to 0. Now the last step after simplifying the expression here is to plug the value of the limit, or h goes to 0, we just plug h equals 0, we get negative 1 over x times x plus 0, and that's negative 1 over x squared. So, what is the derivative of the function f of x equals 1 over x? It's 1, negative 1 over x squared. It's a function of x. So this is f prime of x, it's still a function of x. Now, a function is differentiable at some point a, 1, 2, negative 1, 0, any value, if the derivative does exist. So let's take an example. If f of x is absolute value of x, if you remember when we redefine absolute value of x, we write it as x and negative x. x for positive values or non-negative va non values, I mean 0 or and above, and negative x if the value is negative. Because if the value is negative, we want to multiply it by negative in order to get positive value, because absolute value usually gives us non-negative value. So it's always either 0 or positive. Okay, so this is how re we redefine the absolute value function without using the absolute value notation. So we can write it, those are equivalent forms. Okay, now after writing the function this way, we want to see if the function is differentiable at x equals 0. So let's see if it's differentiable for values greater than 0. For values greater than 0, let's take the limit, limit of the function f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, h goes to 0 from the right because, uh, okay, here we don't need to worry about right or left. We took x is greater than 0, we still have h goes to 0. Now, we, since x is greater than 0, what is the rule? For x greater than 0, the rule is x. So we just plug x plus h into x. So we get limit x plus h minus f of x. f of x is just x all over h. h goes to 0. And then we simplify. We get limit h over h as h goes to 0, but h over h is 
1. So this is for x greater than 0. For x less than 0, for x less than 0, we need to plug here into this rule. So the function is ne negative x. So let's take limit, I mean to find the derivative, alpha prime of x, its limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now we plug the values or the x plus h into the function. The function here is negative x. The function here, it was x. Okay. So here we plug x plus h here. We get limit negative x plus h because we have negative sign here. Minus f of x. f of x is negative x over h, h goes to 0. And then we simplify, we insert negative sign here. And let me continue here. So limit negative x, negative h, negative negative is positive x over h, h goes to 0. And then we simplify negative x plus x is 0. So we get limit of negative h over h. And then we cancel the h from numerator and denominator we get negative 1. As you can see, for x greater than 0, it was 1, the derivative, and for x less than 0, negative 1. So that means derivative does not exist. Or we can write it this way, alpha prime of x does not exist as 0. So alpha prime is either 1 for x greater than 0 or negative 1 for x less than 0. And around 0, it's not differentiable because it gave us two different values. So f is not differentiable at x equals 0. OK. Now, I'm going to erase this part here. Now, from this example, we can, if we want to graph the function and its, gra and its derivative, the graph of the function uh, f of x equals uh, absolute value of x looks like this. This is the absolute value function. And as we can see, it's continuous at 0. As, by just looking at the graph, it's continuous at 0. We don't have any problem. Now, let's graph the derivative of the function. Now, the derivative, as we described, the derivative was 1 and negative 1, 1 for x greater than 0, negative 1 for x less than 0. Now, in order to graph this, for x greater than 0 here, the image is 1, but it's open at 1 because we don't have equality here. And for x less than 1, I mean here, it's negative 1. As you can see, this function is not continuous at this point, at the point 0. And it has, it's defined by uh, two different rules uh, around 0. So it's not differentiable. What is the relationship between differentiability and continuity? A function is differentiable at some point, then it's continuous. If it's differentiable, it's con then it's continuous. Otherwise, if, if it's not differentiable, yeah, if it's not continuous, then not continuous, then not differential. But if it's continuous, as we had here, f of x equals absolute value of x, if it's continuous function, then it might be differentiable or not differentiable. This is the relationship between differentiability and continuity. If the function is continuous, then it can be differentiable or non, not differentiable. If it's differentiable, then it has to be continuous. That's the relationship between them. Now, the last thing is in this part is derivative notation. We usually use f of prime of x. Or if we deal with y function, y equals 2x plus 1, for example, we use dy over dx. So we use d over dx. This is called Leibniz notation. 
So you can use any one of them or y prime if you have the function written in terms of y. So these are some notations that are used for derivatives.